Hi, <clears throat> and good evening in my case, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Um, yeah, welcome to the 48th Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Heuske. This is how you pronounce my last name. No B in there, um, contrary to some <clears throat> people, uh, people's, people's belief. And yeah, so um, sorry for having to reschedule this So on, on such a short notice last week. I had some issues with both my camera and my mic. I hope they are ironed out now. I had both running for extensive periods of times yesterday to make sure that stuff works again and also the days before. So hopefully everything is fine and crisp and clear and not stuttering, not freezing, not producing weird sounds today on me. Because this is what it was doing last week and that was when I decided, okay, I'm not going to do a broadcast with that because this is not working. But yeah, so I've now swapped the camera dongle. Side note, the $10 version works way more better, way better than the $120 Elgato Camling 4K for some reason, but hey, I'm taking it. And uh, yeah, the, the microphone also now seems to work again like it should after I unplugged and replugged some stuff. And yeah, that was a not so fun evening when I realized that I had these kind of issues a day before uh, a scheduled broadcast and actually during a tech check for an upcoming conference. So um, not, not the best of times. Anyhow, long intro. Um, quick short outline of what I'm going to talk to you uh, today to talk talk to you about today yeah that i think that was proper english um so as usual i will tell you what i've been up to the past week since the last installment of these then i will uh tell you what the next steps will be we'll have a quick look at the q and a uh, at the, sorry at the q and a and at the stats as always then we usually would have a q a q and a but no questions in the backlog again so this is where people in the live chat watching this live right now can maybe add some questions if they feel like it if they have any or if something comes up during what i'm going to talk about this is also where we can talk about it some more and uh, yeah and then i wrap things up and hopefully that will be before uh, the church in the neighborhood starts ringing the bell in exactly one hour so um let's see that we get this okay first things first what have i been up to 183 and 184 that's about it, yes. Uh, that took up all my time the past, I think, five weeks or so now since the last one of these. And um, yeah, it was a lot. Um, so first of all, 1.8.3. I released that on September 20th, so Monday, no, Tuesday last week. And um, that was mostly fixes of security issues that we were reported to me over the course of August. And um you might remember that last time in Octoprint on Air number 47, I said that I was going to push out this release within a week or so. And now it happened like three weeks later uh, or maybe four. I lost count. Uh, yeah, that was because more stuff was reported in this time. And um, I figured I'd rather try to fix all of that in, in one release instead of uh, having the release overhead of multiple releases as well. And um, yeah, so all of these that were fixed, uh, those were uh, all in all, uh, let me check, 13 issues, I think. Um, one with severity high, uh, six medium, four low, and two informational. And funny thing, all of them were reported, or pretty much all of them were reported either as critical or uh, high severity, which uh, actually was why all of this took so long and which is also yeah this major issue with bounty programs because most of these were reported through uh, the the website that I mentioned last time called Hunter Dev which um, basically runs bounty programs for open source projects and um, the problem here was that higher severity meant higher bounty payout. So people reported them with a way higher severity than they actually were, according to CVSS. And um, also often with the wrong uh, error classification as well. And weeding all of that out classifications and trying to figure out if there actually was an issue here or not. And so all of this ate a lot of time. And um, yeah, basically the, the result of that was that um, 
over the course of August, I also sat down with the people at 100F, with the uh, CTO and the product team in a very productive, I have to say, uh, call that I really felt was uh, well received and was also something where we really found um, found, found found a good footing and 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 could work out some possible improvements for the platform in the future. But for now, we've opted out of receiving um, reports through this platform simply because um, the way things happened over the course of August and starting in July, actually during my vacation. Um, uh, it, it pretty much bordered on spamming and um, that also was made worse by receiving reminder emails multiple times per single issue like hey you got this report one day ago do you maybe want to do something about it you got this two days ago do you maybe like all the time and there were also way too many low-key issues blown way out of proportion um, uh, by the reporters to yield higher bounties. And as I said, validating and fixing severity and reported error class on valid reports and closing spam reports and all of that, it really just became a severe drain on available time. And I also noticed that it was not only frustrating me, but also my team. And that is something where I become very much defensive <laughs> when I notice that. And um, yeah, the goal of most of the reporters seem to have been more like in quick make making a quick buck than actually um yeah than actually improving octoprint security and usually also without even bothering to figure out what octoprint is in the first place so we often got reports that sounded like the people were thinking octoprint is something that you install on the public internet um uh, accessible by everyone and um that uh yeah basically is is on the same level of exposure like a run, random WordPress in, uh, installation, pretty much. And of course, that is not the case unless people port forward, which they are not supposed to do, and which I also keep sounding like a broken record about. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, if you don't know what Octoprint is and how it is used, and it is a bit hard maybe to judge some of the, yeah, some of the of the of the bugs that they reported properly, but that still doesn't justify slamming a, a high or critical and everything and yeah so anyhow a lot of the reported issues uh, were valid and this is also why all of them were fixed but um of course they were overstated because as i said they were treated like they were uh basically a wordpress installation on the public internet and um uh, with the amount of reports that we got and the time eaten up by reprocessing them, which really stood in no sensible, um, sensible, and now I'm missing a word. Um, I hope that I've written it down here, maybe. <laughs> no, no sensible relation anymore to the improvements that they that fixing them was actually bringing to Octoprint and Octoprint security and uh, and all of that. Yeah, that simply was not no longer sustainable to keep things running like they were on this platform for the time being. So for now, we've opted out of receiving any reports on Hunter.dev. And I already saw someone on Twitter complaining about this and had to chuckle a bit because we already closed one uh, one report by them as spam. Um, and uh, of course, if you are uh, using Octoprint or are interested in Octoprint, roughly know what Octoprint is, and uh, run into a security issue, we still want to hear about that, obviously. And uh, there is an established uh, process for that, and there was way before this, this platform got involved as well, um, which you can find in the security policy, which is uh, linked in the Octoprint GitHub repository, and also linked to from security.txt, which is like a semi-standard. So if you go to octoprint.org slash, I think, dot well-known slash security.txt or something, you will find uh, a link to that security policy as well. And that basically boils down to make sure it exists in the current version of Octoprint. And if so, then send an email with your report to security at octoprint.org. And what I can guarantee you is if you do the needful and um, do this properly and do not try to overstate, um, severities or, um, yeah, if you, if you're just doing a proper job on this, you're, th uh, you, you will be, you will be sure to re re receive my biggest thanks and, um, 
maybe also some stickers if if, if it is something really really uh, bad but what i will not promise you is a bounty because um i totally get that this kind of work needs to be paid and deserves pay but um apparently guaranteeing bounties of whatever kind and and i mean really guaranteeing it only seems to attract the wrong kind of people. Low effort gold diggers that just spray and pray with burp suit in the hopes that they catch some bugs on some pro uh, projects and then just mass report them without even looking at, at the projects in question. And yeah, that is simply not helpful, frankly, in, in most cases at least. And uh, yeah, so that was most of my uh, August and September. And then I continued on with working on 1.84 because briefly after I pushed out 1.83, I got some bug reports in and some of them looked like they really needed fixing ASAP and couldn't, couldn't, couldn't wait until 1.90 or something like that. So I got on with that as well. Uh, 1.84 was released this Tuesday on September 27th, so the day before yesterday. And it really just contains a handful of bug fixes for stuff that was uh, wrong in 184. And also some other minor stuff that I found while figuring out why that stuff broke in 18. Oh, sorry, in 183. Um, and uh, so one of these things was that the global API key was broken in 183. So if you. Oh, the light went off. I think the. USB power cell that I'm using for that apparently stopped working, but anyhow. Um, so uh, one one of the things, as I said, was what, what, what was broken was that if you were using the global API key in order to access Octoprint, that did no longer work because it was uh, the, the new session signing that I'm doing in order to invalidate sessions when you change your password or just when the, when the time runs out and stuff like that, that no longer worked. Um, uh, or rather the session signing did not work for um, for the API user, simply due to an oversight on my part. And uh, so that was fixed, but still, uh, let me quickly switch over here um, because I wanted to show you what the global API key is and that you should no longer use that, but would, what you should use instead, because some people seem to be confused about that. So I figured let's just go about that like this. So this used to be the thing shown in this screen used to be the only API key that was available in Octoprint. And that is basically a key that gives you full admin access to the whole platform. And it's also just one key that is shared about all the clients that you put it into. And that used to be the only way to get external access to Octoprint. And obviously that is not so perfect an approach. Um, First of all, it gives you full admin access. Second of all, if you ever want to change it, you have to change it everywhere uh, in all of your clients. You cannot just simply yeah, uh, take away access for one client without also taking away access for all the other clients. And this is why the global API key has been deprecated for quite a while now. And as you see in this big fat warning screen right here, you should not be using that anymore. It will be removed in Octoprint 2.0 and instead you should be using application keys. What are application keys? Application keys are located here. Here is the global configuration for application keys. So you can um, manually generate one here for a user. I only have two users on this instance right now, admin, which is an admin user and test, which is a regular user. So just an, a, per, a person who is able to operate Octoprint but cannot uh, install plugins and such. Um, you give it a name and you click generate. So for example, I give this the name test, I click generate and I get a new key and I close that. And apparently I should also have it automatically refresh in that case. <laughs> um, but there's a different way by, in which you can do that. You can also create, first of all, you should create, maybe, maybe you should create at least one user account that does not have admin access that you then use to generate application keys for third-party stuff like Cura, for example, unless something in Cura needs admin access for whatever reason, but usually it's probably better you don't give random third-party applications admin access to your instance. And you can also go here under your user settings. So for example, you log in as your regular user, you go to your user settings and then 
you also have your own application keys right here. So you have test and you could generate another one. I hope at least here I auto refresh. Here I auto refresh. Cura, test. You can copy that stuff here. And maybe we should also add some kind of hover effect for a QR code, I'm now thinking, because that is not as easily achievable here as it is in the, in the API key thing. Um, but yeah, what you could also, of course, do is create a new user for your, for your um, third party thingy and use the user API key down here. But frankly, I would suggest use the application keys. The good thing about the application keys is there is also a workflow which third party applications can actually run you through and use to get your permission basically uh, to access Octoprint on your behalf. And that will involve them just sending a request to Octoprint, especially crafted one, sending you to a, um, to, to a login page where you say, yes, okay, this application may access Octoprint in my name, click grant or reject if you don't want that. And then this application, if you, if you granted them the access, will automatically get an API key assigned. And that will also show up here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and so this is what you actually should be using instead of the global API key. Okay. So that was one of the things that I fixed in 184. The other thing was that invalid API keys were not properly treated. They were treated the same way as if you had not uh, provided any API key. And that was actually an older bug, but in combination with the new CSRRF protection, it caused some problems. So I fixed that. And then there was also a big problem uh, actually that I think Jim discovered, or maybe it was Charlie and Jim looked into it. I can't remember honestly, but. The, the bug report was made by Jim, um, which is that uh, once Octoprint started caching your UI and the, and, the, and, the, and the browser was asking Octoprint, hey, is there, a, is there a new UI for me to download? And the server was responding, nope, all fine, use whatever you have. You would no longer get the necessary CS, CSRF token that you now need in order to access Octoprint's API endpoints from the browser context. So stuff wouldn't work. You would just get a loading failed message and nothing would work until you hit re refresh, in which case it would work again. And that obviously could not stay this way. So fixed in 184. Um, then some minor fixes on how the WebSocket handles unknown sessions. And uh, we also saw some problems with the new password hashing stuff. And while I did not roll back to um, pbkdf, <laughs> to uh, but state with Aragon 2 which requires some native parts and also I need to wait okay yeah the the monitor was projecting too much light on my on my on my uh, glasses here um so while I I did not roll back uh from Aragon 2 to PB PBKDF2 um I at least made it so that Octoprint will more gracefully handle the case that we saw surprisingly often which was that Octoprint installed the Argon2 uh, dependencies and they were installed properly, but they still did not work properly for some reason. And then you could no longer log in or do anything. And that is now handled gracefully and will hopefully no longer cause issues in the field. And another thing that I added, because we were seeing a lot of problems uh, with the rollout of 183 was um, uh, I added let me quickly switch you over here again. I added this fancy new reverse proxy test page. So if you go to your Octoprint instance and simply attach dash reverse proxy test um, there, you can leave the trailing slash out if you want or not. It works both ways. Um, then you will receive a page that looks roughly like this. If everything is fine, at least. If something is wrong in your reverse proxy configuration, it might be that uh, it might be that some of these rows here are red, and especially if the, the lower one here is red. That means that um, Octoprint's client, so the core UI, will not be able to find the CSRF cookie header that it requires to be able to use the API, and stuff will not work. So if this one here is red, you will get an extra big alert up there uh, that also tells you that something is broken. And um, what this basically does is it, it shows you what the server thinks all of these variables should have as values and what the client thinks. And if there is a mismatch 
then stuff will not work properly. Um, external URLs, download URLs or something like that on the API will not be generated properly. Cookie names will not be generated properly. So this cookie su suffix here that you see here, if, if there is a mismatch there, then the client will not know where to look for cookies that it needs to read, which currently is only the CSRF token, which is also the only one it can read. Um, and um, so that will hopefully help you to, first of all, figure out what is wrong and then also help you a bit on why it might be wrong. So here you see what Octoprint uses to determine all of that stuff. And um, so basically the headers that you need to take a look at in your, in your reverse proxy configuration in order to fix stuff. And just in case you have no idea what all of this here is talking about, there's also the FAQ entry linked here, which also tells you all of that in more detail. Here's also an example, by the way, of how this looks like if you have something misconfigured. And there is also some examples down here for various reverse proxies that will, that will hopefully help you figure out how to do things. Yeah, so this was a surprisingly major pain point solved by a surprisingly simple and small shower thought because all of this was implemented in less, to, uh, less than two hours, but I think it will really help people. At least I hope so. Yeah, and then I also set the cookie settings a bit sl slightly less aggressive again because some people were running into problems with that be Yeah, in, in certain circumstances. Best look into the change log if you want to know the details on that. And so all in all, the changes in 184 were quite, yeah, uh, not, not large in number and also quite API and HTTP focus, which brings me to an issue that I've once again observed with a vengeance in this release cycle. And that is, please, 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 for all, for all that is, for the love of all that is holy, read the change log. I don't write that for fun. In, in fact, it is not even remotely fun to write it. Um, but I write it so that you can inform yourself what you are getting with an update and ideally before you apply said update. So I do my best to explain in there what has changed in a way uh, so that everyone should understand or at least get a rough idea of which parts I touched, why, <laughs> and, and with what result. And Apparently no one or next to no one does read that stuff because uh, after every single update, I usually get complaints along the lines of I updated and now this part that wasn't even remotely touched in the whole update uh, no longer works. And I mean, sure, something not working is definitely something that we want to get to the bottom of and that we need to figure out, but um, don't blame everything on an update that you did or on updating Octoprint specifically, especially not when you are very, very passive aggressive about that, which we also get a lot. And um, keep in mind at all times that correlation is not causation. So just because something happens at a point in time where something else also happens, doesn't mean that the one thing caused the other thing. And um, frankly, at this point, I'm really just waiting for someone to blame an Octoprint update on their cat suddenly coming down with diarrhea because it sometimes really feels like that. At this point, the Octoprint 184 update has been accused of um, making printer nozzles crash into print beds. I think also of breaking uh, bed leveling and probably also the one or other thing that I've now forgotten. So, uh, no. I'm happy to help with problems. I'm happy to help debug things, but please stop blaming everything on uh, on, on Octoprint updates that goes wrong in your life. Thank you. Um, that being said, we do get a lot of problems that happen during updates, usually either due to one of the common update issues that are linked in every single change log now that are that are pinned in octoprint's issue tracker uh, as well and that are also mentioned in every single release announcement of octoprint on the octo blog um, and we also see it that if something is wrong about a user system like um, for example they happen to usually pull out the power without shutting the pie down properly. And there is slowly but steadily more and more file system corruption. 
It might be that Octoprint runs perfectly fine with half of its files broken because you don't use some functionality or something. But the moment that uh, Octoprint now tries to update itself and tries to write to some faulty parts of the file systems with its new stuff, then yeah, things will magically break. And that is not the fault of the update, that is the fault of file system corruption. So um, please stop just pulling power from your Pi blindly maybe also give your Pi a new SD card every other year or so, because these things also have wear and tear from using them repeatedly and at some point just break. And uh, in general, just don't immediately jump to conclusions what caused a problem, but do some debugging first before you throw blame around. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now, if you run into an issue and it really does look like an issue, like in, like a proper honest to God bug. And um, even after you run in safe mode and you ruled out every other possible reason for something breaking, for example, if you just updated your printer's firmware as well and stuff, stuff stops working, then maybe roll that back first before you say that Octoprint is at fault, thank you. Um, but if you have ruled everything else out and you are absolutely, absolutely sure it is Octoprint that is at fault here, then please, please create a proper bug report on the issue tracker in GitHub. There is a form, form for that that you have, fill, have to fill out. And uh, that will tell you what kind of information we want from you and it will also tell you where to find that information and we need all of that information information is absolute key in order to figure out why something is broken because remember we are not sitting in front of your octoprint instance we cannot see what you see we cannot just push buttons and see what they do we need you to do all of that and provide us with the information about how that went and that means we need proper bug reports and proper bug reports are not 183 is broken or 184 is a disaster all over social media and our discord because you know that that is just renting that is unconstructive as <clears throat> very unconstructive and is not helping anyone least of you least of all you who has the problem um, so if you want to help the project and want to help me and actually also run to, want to help yourself in getting this fixed, then write a bug report. If you want to contribute to maintainer burnout, then just ran away and went away. And um, especially do that without any meaningful information to actually know what broke and, and such without any chance of fixing things for you. So what is really important to me here is that all of you understand that I am not your enemy. I'm not trying to ruin your day by up, by pushing out updates. I'm not ruin, trying to ruin your workflows. I'm not doing shortcuts, sh shortcuts or anything like that. My goal is to, with with every single update, is to make things better, to improve things, to provide you with new features, to fix bugs, to remove security issues, and all of that. And um, with security fixes, I sadly cannot do lengthy release candidate phases because that would mean that the particular details of the security issues would become public knowledge and people could start abusing them um, on exposed inst instances or I don't know, maybe someone is really angry with you and knows you have a 3D printer and now breaks into your LAN or something like that. So in order to not zero day uh, my user base, I do stuff like that in secret. but. Really believe me, I would have preferred to run through a full RC phase with what became 183 versus having to rely on thorough testing by me and my team. Um, because, um, yeah, I mean, we we do do our best, but that is just a really small percentage of, of, of usage scenarios, really, that we cover that way. Um, but, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I and everyone else who contributes to Octoprint is just human. Mistakes happen. And when they happen, you can bet your head on us and me and everyone wanting to make them unhappen and fix things again. But for that, we need your help. And um, help 
means doing the needful, providing a bug report, also being there when we have questions like, can you maybe try clicking this? What happens if you set this config to that? Or maybe can you also do the following and then provide a log file from that? So yeah, I, I really cannot describe how frustrating it is if you get an issue uh, and a bug report on the issue tracker and then have to run after certain bits of information that you need on top of things in order to fix stuff and the person just stops responding. So now you know there is a problem. You see the problem. You understand that it apparently happens again and is reproducible by them and they stop, just vanish into thin air and leave you out and dry and without any hope of fixing it. And that, yeah, is really annoying. All right, so summary. Too long, didn't listen. Uh, if you have a problem with Octoprint and you're sure it is a bug, bug report. If you have a problem with Octoprint and you're not so sure it's a, it's a, it's a bug, but you're out of your, out of your own options, you have no idea how to fix this, support request on the community forums or um, message in the support channels, in the corresponding fitting support channel on the Discord. Hi there, editing Gina here, and sadly the mic cut out here, but what I was trying to say was if you go on the forums or on Discord and report an issue there, then people will hopefully be able to tell you if you need to open a bug report for this, or will be able to help you directly themselves. So that is the best option in that case. Yeah, but under no circumstances is venting on Twitter or Discord or whatnot going to solve your issue for you. The only thing that you achieve with that is feeling really, really angry for a while and maybe also making me feel really, really angry at you for a while. But I don't think that is something that is going to help you or, my, or me. So let's just skip that part. Huh? Okay, that was a lot of talking about what I have been up to. And most of that was just like I have been doing 813 and uh, 183 and 184. But yeah, I mean, that was the past weeks of my life. So... There you go. What are the next steps? Yeah, well, funnily enough, this hasn't changed much because, um, yeah, given the fact that the past weeks I've been doing pretty much the same thing that I did the past weeks that I reported on, on the last Octoprint on air, I haven't yet gotten around to any of the next steps that I um, told you about back then. So those Next steps are still my next steps. So what I want to get back on is there is a ton of stuff tagged um, as 1.9 in the backlog. So on uh, backlog.octoprint.org. And I need to look through all of this. I finally managed to find the time to at least merge some of the PRs. But there's still one big one that I need to um, review, which is um, yeah, turning the whole webcam functionality into plugins so that it is easier to swap MJPEG streaming, for example, for HLS or uh, uh, um, uh, WebRTC, sorry, the, the words just slipped my mind, or whatever else. And uh, a bunch of features are at feature requests and also bug uh, ticket bug reports are tagged with one 1.9 as well and then i also need to look what else i want to have in this release so that is something that i need to get back to then i also still want to rebuild and rewrite the whole documentation as you remember maybe um, the goal was uh, improved sustainability on this project for me so i don't constantly live with one leg down the drain of burnout which by the way i'm sadly once again am um and one step towards achieving that goal, I think, is improving the whole documentation situation because right now a lot of the stuff that you need in order to be able to, um, yeah, um, productively work on Octoprint and and understand her, how certain things go together and and also, yeah, get it get an easier overview than just reading code is still all up here and I need to put it from here into writing and that is something that i would rather do in markdown than in restructured text and so the first step is convert everything to make docs and then start dumping 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 and that is probably going to keep me busy for the rest of the year um another thing that i'm really looking forward to is actually on monday tuesday and wednesday and that is a private uh, github conference called github nova the third edition of that uh, which is a conference that they do for the github stars exclusively so we get some insights into the next 
next up and coming features on the GitHub platform. And on the first day and on the second day, we also give talks ourselves to ourselves. <laughs> and I'll be talking about how I um, fully now fully automated the the testing of the Octopi up-to-date images that are automatically getting generated now when a new Octoprint release gets out. So I, I can't, I don't know if you remember that, but that is this is something that I built, I think, around this time last year, um, using using this new tool that I built, Customizer. So you, uh, it is basically a, a GitHub action workflow that um, takes um, that takes the current Octo Pi image, the current stable Octopi image, so 0.18.0, updates the Octoprint version on that. So if you now download Octopi via the Raspberry Pi imager, you get uh, an Octopi with the current Octoprint version. You don't have to update the first thing as the first thing that you do with that. Um, and by now it also updates the kernel, the bootloader. It does some fixing so that stuff doesn't break due to changes that the Raspberry Pi imager might be doing. Wraps all of that up and then um serves it up so that the raspberry pi imager can find it and download it and 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 you can install it just through that or through the download button on the octoprint.org page and um what i now did is so the problem with this was whenever i pushed out a new octoprint release this would was getting built and then i first had to manually download it flash it see if everything was working before i said yep okay release this make this public or, or rather make this so that the Raspberry Pi imager build part would make it public. Um, and that was a bit annoying given that I have a whole test trick sitting here and a whole end-to-end -end test suit. So <laughs> what I now build is a setup that allows me from the GitHub action to dial into my test trick here, download the build image, uh, flash it to one of the test pies, fire it up, um, after provisioning it in, 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 with Wi-Fi and stuff, firing it up, pre-configuring Octoprint a bit so it has some known user uh, users and also some configuration settings in a, in a certain way, and then it fires the end-to-end -end tests against that. So uh, it tries logging in with various users, checks if username password combinations work or don't. If uh, so, wrong combinations don't. <laughs> um, uh, tries to connect to the virtual printer, verifies this works, uh, uploads a print um, job, opens the settings briefly, closes them again, because all of these were things that in the past got broken by minor things. Uh, so a basic smoke test, basically. And uh, yeah, all of this is now getting done automatically. It takes something like 20 minutes or so, all in all. And when this is done, um, I get a notification that just tells me all is green, deploy, yes, no. And then I say, yes. And I could even get rid of this additional step and have it fully automate. But right now I'm still erring on the side of caution here and want to click yes uh, myself. And after that, everything is fine. So what previously took me something like half an hour still now takes me 20 seconds. And yeah, so pretty amazing. And done with GitHub Actions and a bit of tail scale magic and a bit of scripting. So um, I'm going to talk about that at this conference. The talk will not be public publicly available, but... I'm going to compile a blog post from that at some point, hopefully still this year, and pl pl publish that on the Octoprint blog. So um, that will hopefully also allow all of you to get an idea about how I accomplished that. I'm quite happy about that. So um, I don't know if you remember how much I've raved about the test rig already, but uh, yeah, with this additional new feature of, that, of it, it's really now, yeah pushed up to 11. It's it's kind of fun to see all of these little um, things there in the corner do their thing, do their magic, and me not having to lift a finger in order to do that and everything just being automatic. Also funny when I sit here and I'm on the tail end of a release uh, and just yeah pushing out the blog post, doing some cross posting here and there where I don't have APIs to do that for me and suddenly I hear the, the fan on the Raspberry Pi spin up because the deployment started and the end to end test started of the of the new image because yeah then i know ah that is working as well and i will get an email in about 20 minutes time so kind of fun okay my mouse slept but it's it's back awake now great um yeah so that are the next steps now i promised you a quick look at the stats 
So let me quickly press the right button again. Yeah, so this is, oops, a bit too much zoomed in. Uh, this is the usual view that we have. We see that uh, 184 is already on on, on the, in the third place of um, of versions and at 13% market share. So based on this data and also the fact that, um, oops, that uh, it is also already seeing something like, where was it again? There, it has already seen something like uh, 43,500 printed hours since the day before yesterday. Makes me think that can't be that much of a disaster of a release, but that's just me. Um, yeah, you also see the usual big, uh, 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 fast rise here on this logarithmic scale uh, right around the release time of this. You also see that uh, the yellow curve here is 183 that was rising up, up, up until the release, then it started falling again. Um, I hope that over the weekend we might be uh, where 183 is now. And uh, yeah, let's take a quick look, closer look at 184 specifically. Um, you see that we are currently looking at something like 7,400 instances reported over the last um, hour here. And um, uh, also, uh, yeah, something like 1.8k um, hours per hour printed max, and right now 974. Um, this split here in printer state be between printing, idle and offline is also pretty much normal. I would actually go so far as to say more of them are idle versus offline than in a general population because this looks more like a 33-33-33% um, split, whereas usually we have more like something like 50% of all instances don't are not connected to a printer and the other uh, 25 plus 20, uh, yeah, 25 plus 25 are either idle or printing. So people are using that. It is working. Looks good. Um, here it's actually uh, counting 45,000 printed hours. Apparently some stuff uh, finished uh, between the start of this broadcast when I loaded this page and the just now when I refreshed here. And yeah, we also now have 10,675 instances. So, yeah. And the freshly built image that automatically was tested and everything of Octopi uh, with 184 is already all, as well on 509 instances that are reporting back. So, that is looking good. Um, geographic distribution is also pretty normal. So, all in all, for me, to me, based on the stats, this looks like a normal, well, well running release. And that is good. And Jim just said me why we might finally get an Antarctica report. He heard they were getting better internet access there. That would be lovely because that is literally the last continent that I'm missing in my collection. So that would be amazing. We'll see if that actually works out. Um, yeah. Uh, and also as a reminder to those of you watching that and having forgotten about it, you can at every time, not just with, with me uh, holding your hand with that, you can always go to data.octoprint.org and get a, yeah, a reduced version of what I can see in my stats. Uh, you can see the unique instances. You can see how many total unique instances we had in the past 30 days. Uh, you can see the Octoprint version distribution here as well. And there you see that in the past 30 days, we are at 6% uh, and 10,300 instances of Octoprint 184 already. Um, stable versus release candidates, printing stats. You also see a bit of a time-based fluctuation here, which I always find very funny to see. Um, yeah, the Python 3 stats. We are still at 12% Python 2 usage, and this saddens me. <laughs> Update already. It's been uh, it's been end of life now for almost three years. It's it's time really. Um, Python version distribution, individual Python version distribution between two and three. At least most of you are on two seven sixteen. Um, then uh, I don't know if I have um, showed you that enough already. Uh, server environment stats, okay, that's been there a while, but we also have client environment stats, I think since 180, uh, where you can see what browsers people use to access the Octoprint core UI and what operating system set browser 
runs, which is also quite interesting, I have to say, because it tells me that I apparently should really keep the end-to-end -end test running under Chrome because that is what more than half of you are using. Personally, I'm in the Firefox camp, so at least I am on second place here. Um, Raspberry Pi related stats are also there. Oh dear, dear, we now have so many things here that they overlap. I have to look into that, but yeah. Uh, three, four, some twos, some zero twos, um, still some 1B and 1B pluses, so kudos. Yeah, so good overlook and also the firmware stats. So um, which kind of firmwares are mostly reported? The top 10 are Marlin, Creality 3D, Prusa firmware, Clipper, more Prusa firmware, Stock Marlin, more Prusa firmware, more Stock Marlin, more really old Stock Marlin and Prusa firmware body. I have no idea what that is. If someone could enlighten me, that would be lovely. This may be the mini. Could be the mini, right? Um, and notable firmware groups. Yeah, just Marlin, Marlin, Marlin. A lot of Marlin. Um, Marlin dominates the, um, the landscape. But yeah, so always available for you. Updates every hour automatically so feel free to use that look at it have fun with it um, there is also just because most people seem to forget that from time to time there's also the exports that that thing uses so the raw data that you can use to uh, maybe run your own stuff with it and i know that i think it was jim or maybe it was charlie someone built <laughs> always jim or charlie in my head sorry <laughs> um build some tooling so that you can extract some plug-in usage information from this stuff and use it in your uh, yeah for your own stuff. Also, fun fact, this is the very same data that is used to populate the plug-in usage data on plugins.octoprint.org, which you can see here on the side. So all of this data is available there and can be used, oops, can be used um, to do things. Why is there a big scroll bar here? Well, I don't have to debug that now. Yeah. Oh, something else that I did and totally forgot that I did it. Um, that was an idea from the guys at Simply Print. Great. There. Which is, um, there is now a little privacy policy link on the Octoprint plugin repository uh, for plugins which um, which have a privacy policy defi defined in their metadata. And Octoprint 1.9 will also show that inside uh, the plugin uh, the plugin manager and also in the repository, repository view. And long term, I might also be adding um, a way to um, yeah, to basically prompt you with with this link if you are about to install a plugin that has a plugin uh, that has a privacy pri policy defined, um, so you can read that before you install the plugin. And I also made aware that there might be stuff going on with your data sent to an external service or something that you should maybe at least take a look at the privacy policy for. Um, of course, you can always ignore it, but yeah, so. That is a fun ad addition for this. Okay, um, then back to me. Uh, Jim said that was him, Charlie, and Taylor who did this with the plugin data utilization. So good job on that. Really fun. So they they basically can can now there there, there is some some uh, some project with which you can create your own landing page pretty much for your plugins where you can see the stats for your plugins. Yeah, this apparently was made by these three and um, also works based on these exports. Okay, so that was the stats. Uh, and and on one, one last thing that I did because I just remembered it right now. Um, now that would be the point where we do the q and I'm taking a look at whether there are any questions in the chat right now right um the thing that was at the start of this uh of this broadcast still 
glowing up here, the little star with the Octocat in the middle, that is um, that is a, a GitHub star uh, LED sign that they sent us for GitHub Nova, and I absolutely love it as my background decoration. I just have to make sure it actually gets a proper power line laid, because right now it's still working on an... Um, on a uh, on a USB battery pack, and um, I think that ran out <laughs> just during the broadcast, which is a bit sad. But you 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 still saw it at the beginning, I hope. Yeah, and it nicely uh, pairs up with the no with the Octocad over here, and what you cannot see, but at least see the light that it produces is that on on the wall there on the side wall behind me to my right. Uh, there is a big uh, GitHub logo LED sign as well that I got, which is like like this diameter. So that is really fun. And apparently now I probably switched it off. Okay. I was just surprised that the capacitors apparently were giving it so much power still that didn't compute. Okay. Um, yeah. So does anyone have any questions about the stuff that I talked about? Otherwise, we can also just call it a day. I also heard my partner coming home earlier, so we could have dinner. But yeah, I'm also happy to answer anything that might be coming up or might have come up. Huh. Also, I need to drink something. <clears throat> I really am not used to talking so much anymore. Okay, apparently, so far at least, there is no action in the live chat about any kind of question, so I'm simply going to wrap this up, and if anyone still comes up with it, I'll, I'll simply still get to it before I shut down the session. So, um, yeah, the next one of these we will have, as always, in something like four to six weeks. I try to stick to the regular schedule but sometimes stuff comes up or hardware stops working like it should like we saw last year last week um and that can delay things but there is hope still and um yeah i will announce it on patreon and github sponsors as always and um i think that is about it uh with that being said just uh, thanks for being here i hope it was interesting um even though it was a lot of me spend, standing on a soapbox this time, but yeah, sometimes this stuff just needs to be said because I feel that people really don't seem to understand how things work. Also, sorry if you just heard my stomach <laughs> Um Yeah, people just seem to not understand how some things work and how they can actually help by doing very, very small, but very, very meaningful things. Um, like just writing a proper bug report instead of venting somewhere. Um, yeah, okay. Then, uh, as I said, uh, hope it was interesting. Thanks for being here. Uh, stay healthy as always and uh, happy printing. Until next time. Bye-bye.